Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Happy Thanksgiving for those that are joining us live here on Thanksgiving. God bless you. For those that are listening at any time, God bless you as well. And thank you so much for being a part of this. It's a special day today. For those who are grew up in the American world, Thanksgiving was always a holiday that we followed. Now, not, I mean, now not so much, to be honest, but like growing up. Um, and it, it feels like a very Jewishy thing to, to really have a day where the entire day is called Thanksgiving. What's really unique is that the entire concept of Hanukkah is very much aligned with the idea of giving thanks as well. And I want to I tie in what we're doing here because the origins of Thanksgiving really went back to the Puritan 1619, 1618, 1620, 21, William Bradford, the pilgrims. And they came over to this country. They didn't like roll into like, you know, some beautiful place. They came over. They didn't even get off the boat for the first half a year. If you remember the story of the pilgrims, for those who remember American history, they left the shores too late because of a lot of boat issues. They had to leave the European shores, get on a boat, which they ended up getting, which is a whole story into itself. But ultimately, the boat was supposed to leave to dock here in the spring. It left in the fall. It docked here in the winter. The first year, they didn't even get off the boat. Half the people died on the boat the first year. Pilgrims were, it wasn't like some, you know, sort of like romantic, everyone gets off and they live in little huts and they have those cool little hats. Half people died on the boat. There's no food. They get off the boat the next year and they start building this world. And when they had a real harvest and they realized that they could survive, they, they created a, a day, a, a feast to thank the almighty God. And they had it with Indians because back in the beginning, at least the Indians and the pilgrims understood they had to, to work together. It wasn't so simple, but, but this concept of Thanksgiving really originates with a very faith-based people recognizing that whatever I have in my life is coming from God. So Thanksgiving really, in its core, is a moment to appreciate what we have. Yeah. What we've been talking about for the past few days is this concept that what we have inside us is so much more valuable than anything that we're going to accomplish in this world. And this is an important piece to get underneath for the Western minds amongst us, of which I am at the front of this list. Just to be candid with you, I am a Westerner to my core. I grew up in this world of accomplishments. I grew up in this world of make it, Work, 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 succeed, succeed, succeed. I'm competitive by nature. So the idea that there's something that I'm going to be when I get somewhere is nestled in the heart of a good Westerner. That's how we make so much progress. That's how we work nonstop. That's how we have industry that changes humanity because the Western world, the most industrious part of the universe doesn't stop working because we believe that we're going to find our value at the end of our work. At the core of spirituality, it's that what you have already inside you is more valuable than anything you will ever do in your life. I want to I want to make sure we get this because it sounds like I'm saying don't work. I'm saying anything but. What we have inside us which is a a piece of the divine is more valuable than anything that we're going to do in our entire lives. Now, once we digest that, then the pressure to work to be something starts to dissipate. 
once I don't work to be something, now I have filled up my internal well with real water. I'm not always driving to become something. I'm not always feeling like I'm not enough. And I don't even like, you know, there's, there's like a, we've also like, we've also like exaggerated that as well. Like, you know, in our media, they've sort of taught us that if you feel like you're not enough, that's good. It's called hunger. Hunger. Gotta be hungry. Gotta be hungry. Remember Les Brown? Is Les Brown still doing his thing? Because Les Brown, but Andy, is Les Brown still like rocking? I remember growing up watching Les Brown. Anyone ever watch Les Brown? Guy was awesome. Sit in front of packed crowds. You gotta be hungry. And everyone's screaming, you gotta be hungry. And I don't know if Les Brown's still alive or still doing what he's doing, but man, man, Les Brown was the man. I loved watching Les Brown growing up. That concept of you gotta be hungry means I don't have it. That's what hunger is. Hunger is I need food. I don't have food. Yeah. Immigrants, orphans, right? That's what Michael just said. And it's not really true. It, it could be true. And I'm not saying Les Brown is not saying what he should say. And I'm not even saying that's what Les Brown believes. I'm not talking about Les Brown. I'm saying in spirituality, that's not true. It's not true that we're hungry. That's not where hunger comes from. Spiritual hunger doesn't come from, I need more, I need to do more in this world. The, the concept of I'm missing something physical, food, and I need to put it into my mouth to satisfy my hunger. And when I digest physical, then I will be satisfied. That's not spiritually true. That is through the world of Asaph. Asaph is the brother of Jacob. And when Asaph and Jacob really went up against each other, it wasn't when they fought with the angel. It was when they were 13 years old, which is the crossroads of the spiritual world. Because we believe that at 13, we get an additional level of a soul. And at 13, Jacob and Asa were sitting in the same room and Jacob was making food because his grandfather Abraham died and Asa walked in and said, feed me because I'm hungry. And he poured down this red soup as the famous story goes and it satisfied him and Jacob says sell sell me your firstborn which is sell me the spiritual inheritance and Jacob says what do I and Asaph says what do I need this for at that moment what was going on was so much more than two brothers feeding each other it was an entire perspective on life the the the, the ace of represents the western way of thinking which is I need to physically fill myself up. And once I do, once I accomplish, then I will feel satisfied. What do I need the spiritual stuff for? If spirituality can help me get more physical, fine. I'll, I'll show up. I'll say words. Like, I'll do whatever you want. I'll be part of this culture called my denomination of religion. I don't care. But what I'm really after in life is a physical existence. And what I am missing, the hunger that I feel really is just a physical hunger. And I can now extrapolate that out. At least maybe if it's not physical, like it's in my body, at least maybe it's in my brain. So it's a psychological hunger, honor, not uh, honor, not the way we're talking about it. Honor, like ego, attention something that I can at least fill into my brain or into my body because I'm hungry and I love being hungry because if I'm hungry, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to work hard. I'm going to win championships. I love it. I live on it. I mean, this is, the, this is the breakfast I ate. This is the lunch that I drink. Are you kidding me? Like I'm watching these videos all day growing up. Michael Jordan wasn't the hungriest guy in the world. 
Anyone here grew up in the Michael Jordan era? Was there a hungrier guy in sports history? You grew up under the Michael Jordan way of seeing the world. Your whole life is hungry. Are you kidding? Rags to riches is how America is built. This sounds sacrilegious to, mo to most of us. Even as I say it, my brain is going, are you crazy? This is the story of our nation. It's just not true. It's true to some extent. It's just not true from a spiritual perspective. And it can send people to a place. We all know people that have spent a whole life filling themselves up physically. They don't feel satisfied. They spend their whole lives accumulating wealth to give it away because by the time they're done accumulating it, they're like, oh my gosh, this isn't working. And it comes from this idea of be, do, have. If the beginning of our lives is doing, we run the risk of filling, our, filling up the never-ending pit. There just isn't enough to fill up our desires. There just isn't. There's not enough stuff in this world to fill up our desires. The Talmud says a person that is a, a person never goes to his deathbed having satisfied half of his desires. Never enough. There's never enough clothing that one can buy. There's never enough things and toys. There's never enough food. There's never enough entertainment. There's never enough. Not because there isn't enough created because it doesn't satisfy. We will never be satisfied if we begin our lives doing. We will never satisfy if we do to be. Once we recognize that what I have already is the most valuable thing I will ever get in my life, no matter what I get in this world, you will never get ever anything more valuable than the soul that you already have. Period. That means that the guy on the street corner contains something more valuable inside him. I don't care what he looks like than the largest, biggest mansion ever built. Just two different domains. They just don't play in the same world. The spiritual and the physical do not play in the same sandbox. That's who we are. At the very least on Thanksgiving, we can say thank you for it. At the very least on Thanksgiving, we can look up for a moment and just say, wow, I'm honored to house something so valuable. I'm all for Turkey, but the goal of Thanksgiving is not to stuff ourselves. The goal of Thanksgiving really is to have one moment where we look up and say, thank you for giving me the most valuable thing in the world. Now, once we believe that, and the way you believe it is by thanking for it. Once you believe that, which for some people will take 10 minutes, some people will take 10 years. Because the reason why we don't want to believe this is because we're scared that if we believe it, it means we're going to do less stuff. And when you grow up in a world where doing is the most important thing, whatever's going to get in the way of doing is going to, get, is going to be a problem. Or Noah Weinberg told that to me. He said, most people are scared to be happy because they're scared that if they're happy, they won't be accomplished. Hear that? You hear that genius from such a great man? We're scared to be happy because if I'm fully happy, does that mean I'm going to have less? Am I not going to have the desire to go to work? Am I not going to have the desire to balance my life? I'm happy. Don't happy people just sit by beaches and just stare into the sky and sing like, you know, Bob Marley songs. Like what? I'm going to like, I'm not going to be accomplished if I'm happy. We're so scared to not do that when we have, when we come up against things that are 
what we thought were at the end of the road or really at the beginning of the road. It's hard to believe that. It's hard to digest that. And I'll go even one step further if we want to be honest here. We don't even have the time to think about it. Like, I don't have the time to stop doing, to think about who I am. Like, who has time for that? We're too busy doing to like, wait, what? Nah, I'll do that on Shabbat. I'll do that when I'm retired. I don't know. I got too much things to do now. And so we're scared, I believe, to fully appreciate what it means to be. What it means to house the holiest thing and the most valuable thing we'll ever have in our lives already. What it means that what's inside you is so much more deep. And that means that we are so much more deep. It's easier for us to say, I didn't have the background than to us to say, oh my gosh, I have all the potential I need. It's easier for us to say, I'm not that type of person than to say, you're as patient as you can ever imagine. It's easy to say, I can't and to say, yeah, I can. But once we spend the time really thinking about this, this is the time, Thanksgiving, Friday, the weekend. We spend four days thinking about this for a few minutes a day. It's going to make a huge difference. What I have already is more valuable than anything that I'm going to do in my life. The more we understand that, the more we say to ourselves, then what I really want to do is I want to explore just how incredible this thing really is. What we're doing is saying, if that's the case, then satisfaction in my life is not by doing something outside me. Satisfaction in my life is enabling that source to come out from within me. I want to make sure that's clear. The satisfaction that we get is in the emergence of that hidden powerful source out into the physical world, right? If you have a nuclear power plant the satisfaction that you're going to get is by bringing the energy out from the plant and seeing it energize the world, right? If you have the ability to give, if you're sitting on tons of money, the satisfaction, try it, that you have is bringing that cash out of the bank accounts into the world. What's more satisfying? Like my grandfather used to always ship us money every time I came. He would give me, and I would say, Zaidi, like, I'm okay. And he would look at me like, no, no, I'm not giving you money for you. I'm giving you money for me. What's more satisfying for a grandparent than to give something to a grandchild? The satisfaction of the real satisfaction in life is taking from within and bringing to out. It's not getting to stick in my mouth. It's not filling me up hungry it's bringing it out that's a satisfaction that's real satisfaction is giving now if i think i have nothing i gotta go out and take but once i realize i have everything in the world i have to go out and give doing i'm not doing in order to fill myself up to somehow satisfy myself to accumulate i'm doing because you know what i have you know who I am? I don't want to die knowing that I had so much more that was inside me that I couldn't share with other people. Do you know what's going on here? I got a piece of God. I got a piece of the infinite. I'm gonna get to my I'm gonna get to, to a time in my life where my physicalness is slowing me down because of age. And I look back at my life and go, wait, I've spent my life accumulating and sticking things into my mouth because I didn't realize that I had so much already. I could have been out there doing. We don't do because we're hungry. We do because we're full. We do because we're sitting on a gold mine. 
We do because the bee inside me is burning up. And the only thing that gives me pleasure is when I get to go out and share. It doesn't mean I don't get back in return. It's that this is who I am. I don't need you to tell me how great I am. I know how great I am. I got a piece of God. I need you to pat me on the back. I need you to give me a trophy. I need you to give me a trophy. Do you know what the trophy I have in life is? My soul. You're going to give me that plastic thing in your hand is going to make me feel better than the thing that I have inside me for real. That cl- What are you joking me? Do you know who I am? I'm a piece of God. I need you to tell me. I need you to like compliment me in public. That's what I need. This is what's getting me going in the morning. You know what I need? I need to be able to give because that feeling of up and out that when the it's like you can almost picture it it's like when the energy comes up through our bodies and out into the world that feeling it's not even the giving it's the feeling of giving it's the process of giving it's the pouring the milk for the kids it's the pouring that is the greatest feeling in the world it's the handing that dollar and saying and that feeling of as the hand goes out that pulsating that's spiritual satisfaction that's be do that's life I'm not hungry we just got so much that we want to share that we just can't wait that means that if you can't share for a minute it doesn't make you less valuable but if you can share, it makes life more meaningful. That's be do. That's how we do in the right way. Spiritually. Thanksgiving. Is the beginning of appreciating the bee. So for behalf of me and mine to you and yours, I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Regardless if you observe or don't observe wherever you are in the world. It don't matter. Every day is a good day to give Thanksgiving. Just like every day's Mother's Day, you know that line? Every day's Mother's Day. You ever have that? It's my mom on, you know, Mother's Day. Every day's Mother's Day. Every day's Thanksgiving. And on behalf of me, I just want to thank all of you for being here. All these months sticking with me. It means a lot to me that you're here. And I thank you. You mean the world to me. No matter how you're listening, I want you to know that you mean the world to me. I don't, I don't take it for granted that you give me your attention. And I hope and pray that, it, that, I, that it's, it's worth it. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Today, let's take a minute and really give thanks for the greatest gift we have, which is our soul. Let's go out there. Let's go share it with the people around us. All right, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving and tomorrow with God's help, we'll do some more Q and A, but it looks like the Q and A's are really turning into one, two questions that frame the, the conversation, but we'll keep on rolling. Charlie at charlieari.com if you want to send a question in and uh, with God's help, can't wait to see you tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving.